how comic fam we have some breaking news happening i woke up super excited with a bunch of text messages from you saying did you hear the the flipping news yeah i was notified through instagram by people like check out this article what is going on jeff because we have updates in the comic book community that we haven't seen ever we have a run of comic books a line of comic books that has been forgotten about. We're talking about dollar bin Bronze Age books that no one cares about. Yeah, I, I don't know anybody who cares about these books really, other than for nostalgia purposes. That's right. But S and P Media, Stephen Paul, just bought the rights to Atlas. That's right, Atlas Comics from 1970s. Yeah. So now, with that said, Paramount Studios apparently has the first look at these. That's right. So Disney is on to phase four. Paramount might be on to phase one. We may be looking at the first real competition to Marvel Studios that we've seen. And we are seeing deals actually moving forward. This is a big deal. Stephen Paul Production, there's a lot of money behind this. And they are looking to compete after this Avengers Endgame success. Can you blame them? No, I can't blame them. And really, they, this has been in the works for a few years now. They've been trying to get these characters. I mean, they saw the bigger picture here. It's funny. They've been working on this for years is what I've been seeing. And let's talk about what is actually going to be happening. Because if this is competition, I want to know when. I want to know what. I want to know if this is even, is this potential to happen? Is this going to be another Rob Liefeld situation where they're going to bring the extreme line of comics to the screen? Oh, nope. Two years go by. We hear nothing. Well, I don't think so because we have writers hitting the writer's room. Let's take a look at what's being said about this. We have Stephen Paul, and this is being reported on Variety. We have um, Paul saying that the, there's a writer's room and they're going to prepare 10 story outlines from which the first projects will be selected for development and production. They say they don't know what their flag character will be. We aim to generate material that will attract top talent, said Scott Carroll. This is the uh, president of of uh, Stephen Paul per Media Production. Budgets, this is what's super interesting to me here. For the plan, it's to put the first film into production in 2020 for delivery in 2021. Thereafter, at least one film per year is intended to flow from the deal. Budgets will start at $60 million and could reach, quote, superhero levels. This is very, very interesting. We are seeing character lines that have a potential to hit the screen here within the next two years. Yeah, and this is kind of a sets off an alarm too because it seems like they don't have any direction Ooh, this is exciting so i want to before we talk about characters because we have a comic book run we've alluded to this is these are in dollar bins jeff atlas comics from the 70s i have oodles oodles and so do many he just others. said oodles i said oodles because there's so much there's a lot and they're cool books and a lot of artists at that time were getting paid a lot of money to work they were being offered some of the best pay some of the best, um, uh, what do you call it, incentives to That's work right. for them. It actually changed the game in the 70s, but let's back it up because Atlas has bigger roots than the 70s. It does. So just quickly, historically, we're going to go through it really fast. Do it. Okay. So Marvel was established in, oh, excuse me, 1939, Martin Goodman started Timely. And Timely then moved to become Atlas. And Atlas became Marvel. That's right. Okay, so Marvel was never was not always Marvel for everybody to understand that. It has a richer history than that. Okay, but you heard I said Atlas in there at some point before Marvel. Marvel was sold. And the person Martin Goodman started Atlas again to directly compete with Marvel in 1974. That's right. Martin left in 68 at Marvel, and his one request was to have his son take over as the acting chairman. And unfortunate to him, but probably fortunate to everybody else in the comic book industry, we had Stan Lee take over that role. So it was actually Charles who took over in Atlas in 1974. And this comic book run, this didn't have many titles, did it? Man, to have that much experience, okay, and to have it fold, it literally went from 74 to 1975. We have one year of characters that this publisher put out. Okay, and it folded. 
folded quick, but it didn't seem like it was going to happen like that at first because, as you mentioned, they hit the ground running. They wanted to start something new. They wanted to be more marvelous than Marvel Comics. They were advertising that this was going to be the new house of ideas in the 70s. Like, can you say anything else to really kind of put a slap in the face to your competition? They wanted to be the competition and excuse the noise because we are live and this is just how we have to do it. This is too important. Hit the subscribe button. We talk a lot about comic books, by the way. But in 1975, this run... Of, of artists that came together to make these comic books, they were incented unlike any others at that time. Yeah, they got to keep their art. They right. got to keep the rights to the character. And they got paid better than anybody else. So they were attracting a lot of really good talent. Right. And yet somehow it still folded. Because, Why? Because they were too busy trying to emulate instead of create. Oh my goodness, hold on. Are you saying that they were trying to compete with Marvel and DC directly to their universes that were already giant size? Yeah, I mean, we already saw characters, and yet they started to make their own renditions of existing characters instead of trying to run with stories. These storylines lasted four mm. issues tops because they couldn't create traction enough to have a following. And then you will see mid in mid only four issue runs, you're seeing a change in characters again. Okay, so this is interesting because we have right now an open slate for this company. They're going to probably put a lot of money into one or two ideas. We may see one or two movies. They're going to see how it goes. But the goal is to create a universe. They can either go directly up against Marvel, which we're seeing the words superhero used in media right now, that they're going to do superhero movies, Atlas but that's not what I think of when I think of superhero stuff from this run. I think of a lot of other stuff. But you're right. What they were doing back in the 70s is they would put out this run. It would start to be successful. But here's the problem. Before they got community feedback, they would change the run. I want to show the community this um, really fun comic book here. This is the Scorpion. Um, take a look at this character. By issue two... The scorpion here will look like this, all right? This is a very short run, and it was starting to be successful. There's actually a lot of people who appreciate this run, but by issue number three, this is what the scorpion looks like. You can tell that they were going with the flow. They saw what Marvel was doing, and they wanted to copy it, and if this is similar verbiage of what was happening back then that's happening right now. Yeah, this is kind of us leading towards our views possibly later for the future of what we think these films could be, okay? Because if they're going to become more emulators than possible creators with these characters that they're potentially propositioning us to watch, it's going to be interesting to see if it folds just as quickly or if there's success there. Because there is a, an opening with some of these characters that we're not getting from Ooh. Disney's side. I like that you bring that up. So let's talk about some of these characters that are being thrown out there. And I'm going to read these because I know that the good majority of our, our community, this is they're just not going to have heard of them. These are a couple issues in a run in the 70s, some by major artists. I mean, there's some major artists in this run. We'll get into those types of things, maybe more specifics in later videos. But we have Phoenix being talked about, Tiger Man, Iron Jaw, The Dark Avenger, Grim Ghost, Wolf, uh, Son of Dracula, Brute, Texas Kid, Dopey Duck. Like these are characters that are on nobody's radar. But you mentioned one thing. You said that there is a need in the market. And I want to go through some of the reasons why these particular runs didn't make the sick it didn't make success happen in the 70s because the needs in the market that they were trying to match were being met directly because they were copying Marvel and DC stuff. So let's take a look at Iron Jaw, for example. Iron Jaw is being discussed in the community. Um, mo pretty much every single media company that's covering this is mentioning Iron Jaw. Iron Jaw is a rendition of who? Conan the Barbarian. Absolutely. Absolutely. There is no one that would argue this, and you can see, like, okay, this is that character. It's already been done. However, we do not have a Conan types, type of franchise that is super successful right now, and if they play their cards right, it's a race to the top. 
Yeah, I mean, they're looking to actually launch their first movie in 2021. I do not think that Phase 4 is going to derail what they're doing to match whatever Paramount's going to be doing. So there is a chance that this could be very successful and fill that void of, where's Conan? What's also an interesting one to discuss is the Brute. Now, the Brute, we know. I mean, one guess who this character was made to emulate. Hmm. I wonder. I mean, like, look at the, the, the pants, the ripped pants. This is the Hulk. And this is the Hulk that a lot of people want to see. This is the Hulk that people want to see. Absolutely, Jeff. And we know that because of rights, the Hulk isn't getting his own standalone movie. We've seen him just appear in other franchises because that's how they have to work him out. Well, if Marvel can't figure out the right situation and give us more Hulk, we may have a competition to the Hulk, a different form, but someone that could actually meet the monster demand that the community has been, been hungry for. And really, for us not knowing anything about these characters, like we've been let down by DC plenty. And sure. we have a rich history with characters, so we have expectations. We have no expectations with these characters. So this could really be a fresh slate for them to just create something innovative and new. I think of Hands of Dragon. A kung fu fighting soup, like hero. Like exactly. Shang-Chi is being talked about right now. We've been talking nothing about Shang-Chi over this last like year. Uh, this last year, it's been like every other week, something from this run we're talking about. We're talking about potential movies. It's one of the only things we know from Phase 4 that could be coming. is because the production companies know that some type of kung fu movie is wanted by comic book fans and you know the Marvel and DC fandom. It, it's something that we need. And look at this list here. We have Morlock. Who is Morlock? I got to just show this picture of this character here because, you know, we're talking about characters that were in competition. Yes. But who was Morlock uh, modeled after? A thing like creature from the swamp. Yeah. He's like Swamp Thing. He was supposed to kind of go along with that Swamp Thing success in the 70s there. Coincidental that we have DC, the DC app bringing Swamp Thing this year, all right? So, yes, we may not be seeing Swamp Thing make the movies, but considering that this whole deal has been being, um, it's, it's been in the works for years, I wouldn't be surprised if there's a list of characters just like this and they're mapping them out, trying to figure out, well, when, when can we drop this? When can we drop this and actually have this catch on? Because if Marvel and DC are focused on everything else, who knows what DC is doing anymore at this point and who really cares? And we know Marvel's getting ready for stage four and they're going cosmic. Like, it's pretty clear that we're more likely to see Beta Ray Bill. Uh, Beta Ray Bill. We're more likely to see um, Nova, you know, than we're more likely to see Namor. At this point. But you know what? Atlas coming into play out of nowhere, making my morning. I'm excited to go digging in back issue bins. I'm pulling out all my Atlas. The community has got to go to their local comic shops. Their comic book store owners are going to go, what is going on? Why are people asking me about my Atlas comics? What is going on? It's going to be a fun next year as we follow this story. Yeah, I'll be honest. If I, if I saw even two people buy an Atlas book in a day... It wouldn't really blow my mind as a store owner. I'd be like, what is going on? What am I missing? Because that is how unimportant these books have been in the collectible market for decades, to be honest. It's going to be fun to see how things roll out. I do appreciate the comic book community. Thank you so much for joining us. We are going to be doing a bit more of these kind of impromptu live types of videos or to keep them short, keep them um, very direct to provide you with the utmost quality that you know we strive to do, as always. Geek responsibly. Enough said.